Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, we are thankful to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Thankful for all of you that were uh, able to make your way out to our service on today. Uh, we are going to uh, receive any outspoken prayer requests. Any outspoken prayer requests? Yes. Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Any other outspoken prayer request? Yes, Elder Coleman. Malik uh, Tolliver. Malik Tolliver. Donate for the garden to his wife. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, all right, all right. We, again, we reported the passing of uh, Sister Karen Dowdy. Um, and her services are going to be this Friday uh, at 1 p.m. at Floral Park Memorial Cemetery. Um, they are still in the process of finalizing. It may be a graveside, it may be in the chapel, and so uh, we will know more as uh, we go along. We should have more details, I trust, today. And then um, the passing of uh, Sister Mabel Byers on Sunday. And um, I, we don't have any final details on those arrangements, although the family is meeting with funeral directors probably as we speak or, uh, or today, this afternoon. So uh, we will have more uh, on that as we uh, move forward. Uh, in the Lord. Uh, also want to remember Sister Larsenia Johnson down in Starksville, Mississippi, uh, and all of those that are on our prayer list. Elder Mayfield is um, uh, not going to be here today, and we want to pray for him as he's dealing with a number of things and a number of situations. Elder Killebrew's son, Eddie, uh, who uh, has been uh, in intensive care. I believe he's uh, doing better, but we want to remember him in prayer. I'm going to ask everyone, please stand. Everybody, please stand. Again, make your unspoken prayer request known by the raising of your hands. Amen. Dear God, right now, Lord, in your name, we do bless and thank you for all of your goodness, all of your grace, all of your mercy all that you have done, all that you're going to do. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would indeed move by your power divine. Sweet Jesus, Lord God, bless as only you can do. Lord, you see the bereavements that are going on uh, in uh, our city. Lord, bless, oh God, even the Tyson family in the loss of one more member on this week. Uh, Lord, bless and encourage and strengthen them, Lord, by your power divine. Lord, all those that are going through, that are pressing their way, Lord, we ask you to touch uh, sick bodies, touch afflicted minds, oh God, touch those that are troubled, oh God, those that are going through. Lord, you said, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble, but we know that in all our situations, you said that you would be there. And we bless you on today. We ask that you would bless our class on today. Lord, that your word will continue to find a resting place in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today... Our uh, lesson is entitled, The Beauty of Holiness. The Beauty of Holiness. Uh, we are living in a day and a time where holiness is not addressed and uh, where uh, it is thought to be something that is um, 
not only unattainable, but something that we should not even strive for. But God is calling for holiness. Amen. We can sugarcoat it, water it down, do whatever we want to do with it. Uh, we can uh, try to excuse it because of where we are, but God is calling for holiness. Amen. And so, again, that is something that we cannot uh, skirt or get around. And so I think that we have a, a, very, uh, a very important lesson before us on today. Uh, again, as always, to kind of outline uh, our uh, direct, expected direction for our class on today, uh, we want to first look at the definition of holiness. Then we want to consider out of the word of God a call to holiness. And then finally, the way of holiness. Again, this, if the Lord says the same, this is a four-part series, four-part part lesson series. And so we should uh, be covering it over the next four to five weeks. Uh, and so we uh, will move forward uh, in the name of the Lord. First of all, looking at the definition, just looking at the word holy, comes in the Hebrew, out of the Hebrew word kodesh, which is, uh, which means, uh, speaks of a sacred place or thing. It speaks of sanctity. It speaks of a consecrated thing dedicated or hallowed thing speaks and is, uh, is uh, also translated as a saint or a sanctuary. Again, we need to recognize when uh, the scripture talks about something being holy, it's sacred. Amen. And if he is calling us to be holy, he is calling us to be something that is worthy of uh, acknowledgement as being sacred. Now, again, holiness, as I trust we will see today, uh, again, our lesson is the beauty of holiness. Holiness is a high thing. Amen. Holiness uh, again, folk can can uh, can uh, uh, try to shoot it down or what have you. But holiness is a high thing. Holiness is a glorious condition or position. Holiness puts us in a very special place. Amen. To such an extent that we must always remember and never forget that it is through the empowerment and the endowment of God. Because sometimes when folk get special, they get proud in themselves. Yeah, man, they get caught up with I am, I, 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 is what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Yeah, man, Lucifer was a glorious being. He was in a position that was of the highest order under God. Amen. Yeah, As I say, and I, I could kind of uh, go through a description of what the glory of God is all about, but suffice it to say that uh, the unveil, and, and God has to veil his glory. Amen. For us to even come into uh, the presence. Amen. When Moses came down off the mountain, just seeing the after glory, the residual glory of God, his face shone to such an extent he had to put a veil over it. Amen. That's just from being in what was left over glory. Amen. 
And so you can imagine what it was like for Lucifer as the Bible says, the anointed cherub that covered as that one that was in the closest proximity to the throne of God. You can imagine what the glory was like for uh, him being there. But his problem was he began to see the glory in himself and failed to acknowledge or recognize that what he was seeing was the glory of God. Amen. And so as I talk, and, and I say that because uh, if the Lord helps me to communicate, or, or if the Lord allows you in your spirit to pick up on this lesson today, amen, holiness is a glorious thing. Amen. But when we get to feeling holier than thou or feeling like we are, are, are what it's all about, we miss the mark. Because it, because it is, uh, God calls us to it, and God is the one that brings us to that place in our lives. Amen. And so, though we, uh, and I say this, you know, it's got, it's got, it can't be like, can't be like you, amen, if you was a multi-billionaire, amen, and you about to give your child a few million dollars, you try to talk to him, now don't waste this, don't do nothing crazy with this, don't let this go to your head, don't let this cause you to do something off the wall, amen, use this wisely, and so I'm saying that in light of us talking about holiness, don't, don't, don't get caught up that it's you, amen, but we're striving for more and more of God. Oh, yes. We're striving to be a, a, a greater a vessel, amen, in the hands of the Lord. A more mighty instrument, amen, in uh, the service of the Lord. A greater warrior in the army of the Lord. Amen. But again, talking about hope. See, now, again, uh, uh, I, like I say, I ain't been saved all my life, but I sure been going to church all my life. Amen. Because when you grow up in an apostolic home, you, you don't choose whether you go into church. <laughs> Amen. Far back as I can remember. <laughs> Amen. I was going to church. Amen. Going to church, going to church, going to church. That's back in the days when you went to church, went to church, went to church. Amen. Just about every night of the week. Amen. Went to Sunday school, uh, morning service. Amen. Afternoon service somewhere. You had dinner in there somewhere. Amen. <laughs> then you went to evening service. Amen. And don't talk about I don't feel like going to school in the morning. <laughs> Amen. So, again. Uh, you know, I go back a little ways, but there was a time that we uh, identified ourselves as holiness folk. Amen. Holiness. What? 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 Which I go to a holiness church. Amen. Holiness. Amen. It is again. It, it is identified as something sacred. Amen. Again, out of the Greek, hagios. Hagios, uh, holy in the Greek, deals with something sacred, something physically pure, something morally blameless, something that is ceremonially consecrated. It goes on to talk about uh, Webster. Webster gets in uh, this definition, and Webster identifies something that is holy as something that is exalted. Amen. Worthy of complete devotion is one perfect in goodness and righteousness, having a divine quality, the quality or state of being holy. And it talks about sanctification. Amen. To be sanctified. And so uh, on uh, the second page of our handout, sanctified. Sanctified means to be set apart to a sacred purpose or to a religious use, set apart. There's a difference, amen, there's a difference in you. Amen, why can't I do what everybody, because you are saved. 
Amen. It's like when your children are growing up. Why can't I do what so and so do? What so and so down there? No, the so and so don't live here. <laughs> don't matter what so and so up the street is doing. <laughs> as, as Joshua said, as for me in my house, <laughs> Amen. We're gonna serve the Lord, Amen. And so again, you know that that you know that times some of y'all when the street lights came on, you better be in the house. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you was coming home from school. Amen. And mama didn't know it. You weren't going to stop and play baseball all evening. Come in late after dinner and all that. You wasn't doing that. Amen. But again, separated, sanctified, separated, set apart. Amen. And again, sanctified, separated from the world, separated unto God. Amen. Again, back in the day, uh, they, they used to uh, identify things as being worldly. Amen. When you put that label on it, you didn't have to, why this, why that? If they said it was worldly, you wasn't doing it. <laughs> Amen. With no debate, no discussion. Amen. If it was identified as something that was, that was worldliness, you wasn't doing it. Yeah, man, all they had to say was uh, music, the, the song was worldly. You wasn't singing it. <laughs> and you wasn't playing it in the house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All they had to do was talk about uh, some dress or some, some suit or some tie or what was worldly. Yeah, man, you wasn't wearing it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, man, all they had to do was tell you some activity was worldly and you couldn't do it. Yeah, man, but they, they, they made, uh, there has to be a distinction between the holy and the profane. Again, sanctified means to free from sin, purify, to make productive of holiness or piety. And so holiness is a very, very special thing. Let's go to our second segment a call to holiness. Let's go to Exodus chapter number three and verse number five. Exodus chapter number three and verse number five. Again, this is the first time that holy is mentioned in the Bible. And there is a hermeneutical principle that says the first mention, the first time a subject is mentioned in the Bible, we understand what it stands connected with in the mind of God. And so, holy in this verse, the first time it appears in the Bible says, And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is what? Holy, holy ground. Which says, there are some things that if we are going to move up to holy ground that we gonna have that that we can't take with us. Yeah. Amen. That we're going to have to set aside. Amen. Again, Moses could say, "I've been wearing these shoes. These shoes I wore them, and they, they I wore them when I got kicked out of Egypt. Amen. I wore them uh, when I was uh, tending my my, my uh, father-in-law's sheep. I, I wore them. I've worn them. I wore them. Amen. These are some good shoes." Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all don't, none of y'all have trouble with your feet, but some, some folks got trouble with their feet. Amen. Every pair of shoes they can't wear. Praise the Lord. I used to look at shoes. So they, they, they be kind of like the devil, you know? You put them on because and, and, you're trying to see, am I going, is this going to work? Uh, <laughs> am I going to be able to wear these today? You put them on, sit there. And they feel pretty good. You say, I think I can make it through service in these. <laughs> Amen. And then you get out there and get about halfway through service. It seems like they just do like that. <laughs> it's like the devil tells you it's all right. They get you out there. I hope you brought another pair of shoes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But again, what I'm saying to you. Uh, he is that uh, he, 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 he could say, why? Why do I need? God said, put off your shoes. He said, don't come any further. Yeah. Amen. And this 
again, was symbolic of what God was dealing with as the recognition or the appreciation for that which is holy. Amen. We do not make that which is holy common. Amen. There he says, no, I know, I know you've been trodden along the way that you have, but right now uh, you're going to have to change some things. Amen. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And again, uh, we understand uh, that you don't get holy just putting, putting off your uh, physical shoes, but it was symbolic. Amen. It was typical of something, of a principle that God was establishing as it related to holy. Amen. Let's go to Exodus. Uh, oh, we're already in Exodus. Let's go to chapter 28. I'm sorry. Let's go to chapter 28 and verse number 36. This is, uh, this is uh, the, the, the giving of direction for uh, the, the creation or the production uh, of the priest and his attire as he goes into, uh, and, and not, just the, not just a priest, but the high priest, the one and only one that was allowed one day a year to go and minister in the holy of holies. Amen. And so he, uh, uh, again, being at that level of priesthood and carrying that level of responsibility and authority to be the representative of God. Amen. Again, he says uh, in this verse, and thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engravings of a signet. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness to the Lord. Now please understand, and uh, again we have uh, the, we have uh, years ago uh, uh, Evangelist Tate uh, had uh, Sister Ariel Vale to uh, to do to make a high priest garment for Bishop Ferris, Amen. Because he was a tabernacle teacher, um, a high priest, and and uh, all of that. He he just had that, and so they and it's hanging in the uh, minister's room, in uh, with, along with much of his, some of his library. But it is a very impressive uh, outfit. Amen. It's a very impressive garment uh, that the high priest was given to wear. Amen. This is especially uh, understanding that they were coming out of Egypt. Uh, they were um, being given the law given the um, specifications for uh, the tabernacle and all of its um, intricate parts. And uh, he, they, so again, they were still in the wilderness when this was uh, produced. And so uh, he's walking around in a garment like that. And again, he would make sacrifices, especially on the Day of Atonement, he would make sacrifices first, sacrifice first for himself as the high priest. Then he would make sacrifice for uh, the, the furniture and for the altars and all of that to sanctify and to purify them. Then he would make uh, sacrifice for the people. Amen. Uh, and so he stood as a very, uh, he, he stood as a very important individual. And in this uh, garment, in this outfit that he's wearing, uh, he uh, draws attention and they could get caught up in the outfit. But God said, I want you to put a plate on your head. <laughs> I want you to put a plate on the 
uh, uh, I, I don't want to call it a, a, a hat, I don't want to call it a crown, but I want you to put a plate upon that uh, that you wear on your head that says holiness to the Lord. So when they are looking at you in this tremendous outfit, they see holiness to the Lord. And again, as I say, the high priest many times when he was operating in his office would come out and speak as an oracle of God. But he said, I don't want them to get so caught up in the individual. Amen. But when they look, I, and, and again, you know, he said, do it in gold. Amen. What are you saying? So even if they're standing back in the crowd, amen, when the sun, amen, reflects off of that outfit and reflects off of your head, something is shining. Amen. And when they get close, yeah, man, they understand that thing says holiness to the Lord. Again, a pure gold. Gold represents the divinity. Yeah, man, gold is a representative of God himself. And so that they do not get caught up with the person. Because when Aaron died, somebody else had to come and take his place. Yeah, man, and so it wasn't about the person. But they would all they were always to wear this particular out and I'm calling it an outfit because it has a, a lot of different pieces to it. Amen. And so uh, the totality of it, amen, whoever walked in that office, uh, they uh, the, the, with all that they were wearing, uh, there was something on their head that said holiness to the Lord. Ah, with all of the blue and again having the ephod and the breastplate with all of those precious stones on it and uh, the various uh, elements on the shoulders and all of that, the, the, the bells and the pomegranates around the hem of the garment. But on that head, holiness, holiness to the Lord. Amen. In ministry, uh, in of uh, being a representative, uh, standing in the gap, amen. Uh, every, every minister ought to reflect holiness to the Lord. Get caught up in I'm this, I'm that, and I, 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 but it's holiness to the Lord. And so we see these uh, symbolic elements uh, being, uh, uh, being, being uh, identified uh, even in the law and part, the book of Exodus is the deliverance. Uh, it deals with two things: their deliverance out of Egypt and their constitution as the people of God. And what I mean by this is God. God takes Moses up on the mountain. He gives him the law. Amen. He, in this book, outlines his, uh, as, as we see here, the elements of the tabernacle, the elements of the high priest and all of that, and begins to set within the, their understanding uh, that, that uh, overarching document of what God's expectations are of Israel and what their responsibility is because again they were the chosen people but with privilege goes responsibility amen it's a dangerous thing for somebody that has privilege but are not responsible individuals do not handle it with responsibility and so, and because there's some folk, they get, uh, they, they get a little this, get a little that, and they walk around like they are so important. But with that in mind, with what God gives, he also gives you a responsibility because, in mind, you are chosen. You are special. You are peculiar and unique unto him. Amen. And so... Uh, upon uh, that plate, uh, again, 
is holiness unto uh, the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's move on to Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 6. This is, this is, this is kind of strong right here. It's kind, of, it's kind of separate the men from the boys. Amen. The wheat from the tear. Amen. For Jesus says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Amen. And again, it's not for me or you to, uh, to, to call somebody a dog. It's, it's not within our purview. Amen. But again, there are those that will not receive, amen, that which is holy, amen. And Jesus identifies them as dogs, amen. Then he says, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you and tear you up. Yeah. Amen. Again, uh, we, there are some folk that are just not going to accept truth. They're not going to accept the things of God. They're not going to accept, amen, uh, the principles that are set forth in the Bible, that, but they are going to humanize them, secularize them. They're going to bring them down to a level that is commensurate or acceptable unto them. Amen. But he said, uh, but, but again, we, we say, well, we, it, it, we're giving it to everybody. Everybody ain't going to receive it. Amen. Not only will they reject it, but they'll try to destroy you. Amen. But again, uh, again uh, as, as Jesus uh, did, Amen. He spoke his peace. Amen. And uh, at times he would leave it with them. Amen. As the scripture says in, uh, in at least one place. Amen. So that they will know that there was a prophet among them. Amen. We do not, we're not uh, afraid to speak the truth. Uh, we should not be hesitant to speak the truth. Amen. But, you know, and, and again, I, I know, I know, but Jesus told him when he sent out his disciples, he said, if they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. My God. Amen. But again, uh, everybody, uh, again, will not receive this teaching. Everybody will not receive uh, the call to holiness. Amen. But it is uh, so, it, it, it is, uh, it is real just the same. Amen. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter number 31. And 2 Chronicles chapter number 31 and verse number 18. And, and again, today, uh, kind of stand around in the Old Testament um, as I uh, have said, we, uh, in preparing this lesson, uh, and I'm not, uh, in preparing this lesson, uh, there are over 611 uh, scriptural references to holy, and I say over because there's 611 just for holy. Then you got to add in the times that it is dealt with as holiness. Amen. And so, uh, again, uh, as, uh, as your Bible teacher, amen, I try to go through all of those references and distill it down and draw out that which, uh, um, and, and kind of categorize uh, that which we can put. And that's, re that's the reason that this is, uh, this lesson has four sections. I couldn't, I couldn't get all of this into one class. Amen. But again, <clears throat> Our, uh, so when, I, when we spend time in the Old Testament today, understand that there's plenty more in the New Testament. Amen. We're just setting the stage. Let's go on to uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 
uh, chapter 31 and uh, verse 18, uh, which says, and to, the, and to the genealogy of all their little ones, their wives, their sons, their daughters, through all the congregation, for in their set office, they, what? Sanctified themselves in holiness. Amen. There is responsibility on our part because, again, God speaks it. God can uh, help us to do. Amen. But if we reject, I don't want, ah, that's too that's too straight. That's too straight. That's too, that's not comfortable. What, so on and so on and so on. Amen. <laughs> Again, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, when I say something too straight and too, you know, I'm thinking about sometimes that's where your shoes are. But anyway, he said, take those out. But anyhow, uh, the, the folk want everything to be comfortable. Amen. But there are some things in life as you reach for higher heights, as you reach to achieve, there are some things that are not comfortable. Amen. We see these, uh, these, these uh, championship athletes, they didn't get to where they are and, and say, well, I don't want to run. That's not comfortable. Amen. Some of y'all uh, on, on, uh, uh, on the basketball team, what have you. Some of y'all know what a suicide drill is. Amen. You run, run up the quarter court, run back, run up to half court, run back, run up three quarters of the way, run back, run up full court, run back. And sometimes you got to do it all over again. Somebody go, ah, that's too much running. I'm tired. This and that. Why I need to do all of that? All I want to do is shoot the basketball. Amen. If you're going to play two or three, four quarters, you're going to have to run up and down the court. Amen. Folk, 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 I always remember, amen, Michael Jordan, how smooth he was and all of those shots that he took. Amen. And how many times he would be uh, the high pointer in the game. Amen. They don't also realize that many times he had, uh, he was up in the top echelon of uh, individuals that block shots on the other end of the, uh, of, of the court. You know, again, like I say, that's, that's, pro, that's pro ball. Amen. Some of us, as we got older, amen, just playing ball, we, we started playing smarter and not harder. <laughs> that's right. Instead of, instead of running up, court, up and down the court all the time, we got older and say, I'll be down here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Amen. But again, uh, so, you know, uh, what God is calling us to is not always comfortable. And many times we're going to have to go beyond ourselves, beyond what we think we can do and uh, what we think, uh, you know, what we uh, think within ourselves and allow God to take us to where he wants to be. But here it talks about they sanctified themselves in holiness. Amen. Yeah, Ain't nobody going to follow you around every day to see if you living right. Amen. Yeah, you got to sanctify yourself. You got to make decisions, amen, when ain't nobody watching you. Amen. Amen. I don't know. I don't know. I, it just so happens here. I'm not picking on Trustee Britton, and he probably don't even remember it. But years and years ago, uh, it was around Christmas time, and I was out with the family, and they were shopping. We was at Washington Square, and... Um, you know, I had three boys and a wife, and they were just running around everywhere. And I, I just went over and found me a place to sit out in the middle of, of you know, how they have the, the plants and the things you can, you know, you can just kind of sit. I just went out there and sat. I let them run as much as they wanted to, but I wasn't running to all them stores. Amen. And I had, I had gotten, it may have been for my birthday, I'd gotten a black coat with a hood on it. Amen. And I, w I was sitting out there and I was leaning down like this and I had my hood down 
And I think Brother Britton, uh, he walked by and either I spoke to him or he spoke to me. Oh, he said, I, I didn't, oh, is that you? Praise Lord, praise Lord, Elder Griffin. And he said, now, y'all got to remember, I, and, 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 and you know, he may not remember it because I was the one sitting there in the black coat. <laughs> You remember? Amen. All right. And, and he, he said, because, y'all know, Mother Boyd, when she preached, he said, you know, if we was to go out to the mall, amen, and put our head or hood over our head, we'd be surprised what we see the saints doing. He said, you ain't out here trying to see what the saints are doing, are you? Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. And, and again, uh, and, and I say that in all love and, you know, we just enjoy one another. I think he's probably waiting on somebody too. But anyhow, uh, we, we just enjoy some brotherly conversation. But I'm saying this to say that uh, nobody's going to follow you around to make sure you're doing right all the time. Amen. It's got to be in your heart. Hey man, whether anybody's looking or not, hey man, it's got to be in your heart. Hey man, whether anybody pats you on your back, hey man, because in fact you're probably gonna get more criticism than you are gonna get compliments living for the Lord. Hey man, it's, well, it's gonna be more folks criticize you than it will be folks saying, you know, I, you you thank you keep on keeping on in the Lord and this and that. Hey man, that's why we ought to. That's why we ought to encourage one another. Yes, Lord. Hey man, cause cause if we don't encourage one another, hey man, very seldom is the world gonna encourage you. Amen. So we ought to, we ought to uh, uh, show brotherly love and kindness to one another. Ought to edify each other. Amen. Encourage each other as we walk with the Lord. Amen. And so again says they sanctified themselves in holiness. God ain't going to make you be saved. He did everything that he needed to do for you to be saved. He provided everything that needed to be. There's no excuse for you not to be because he's given everything necessary. But he ain't going to twist your arm and drag you down and pitch you in the water. Amen. Now, there are times now. Yeah, let's just talk about some testimonies. There are some times as some folk were sitting in church in an altar call, and they don't, they don't exactly remember how it was they got down front. They don't, <laughs> they don't exactly remember how they got down front. Yeah, man, they were sitting in their seat wrestling and wrestling, and, and they don't, they, but, but the Lord helped them. Yeah, man, but they can't say, I got baptized, and I did, you know, I, 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 Lord, maybe. That's why we got to be careful about trying to force folk to be baptized. Amen. It's got to be what they want to do. Amen. Now, again, there was one place in the scriptures where uh, Paul, amen, after he had preached and after they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can anybody forbid water? It, it was it Peter? Thank you so much. Peter. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> Peter. Can anybody forbid water? that these that have received the Holy Ghost like as we have should be saved. And he commanded them to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. But what I'm saying is God has already had one revolution in heaven. Ever, yeah, revolution. Amen. Where folk went after somebody else. Amen. Again, a third of the angels followed Lucifer. Amen. And, and that would kind of imply that there, there were some angels up there that took their eyes off the Lord. Amen. And they put their eyes on this shining angel. Amen. And said, we're going to follow him. As I say, that will never happen again. Ain't going to be nobody up there that didn't intend to be there. Ain't going to be nobody up there that uh, did not, uh, that it, it was not their desire to be up there. Amen. You're going to be there because it was in your heart. Amen. Amen. Not that you could do it on your own, but because it was in your heart, the Lord helped you. Amen. The Lord preserved you. The Lord sustained you, gave you strength. 
Amen. But he, he, he doesn't need anybody up there. They don't want to be up there. Hey Amen. Somebody get to heaven talking about where the party at? Y'all don't party up here. Hey Amen. No, you in the wrong place. <laughs> uh -uh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. He looking for somebody that is going to be excited about the fact. Hey Amen. You know what y'all going to do all day? Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. Y'all going to be praising and worshiping God. Amen. Yeah, and he, he's looking for somebody that's excited about praising him. Excited about worshiping him. Amen. Yeah, now there are some that are not excited about it because they haven't experienced it. But if you have experienced the glory of God and the blessings of praising God. Hey, Amen. When God puts you in a place where uh, all of the hindering spirits are gone, all of the limitations are gone, and you can just bless and praise Him. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And so, again, there's personal responsibility in this. Amen. And again, sanctify themselves. I, I, I have to continue to hit it because, again, we'll take too much credit to ourselves. I sanctified myself. Amen. It, again, it, you were willing. Amen. And God gave you the help to do, amen, what he called you to do. Amen. And so in it all, the glory continues to go back to God. Amen. Amen. And when the glory goes back to God, help us, Lord. When the glory goes back to God, then we ain't holding our nose up at people. Yeah. Uh-uh. Amen. Yeah, because we're just thankful that the Lord is helping us. And if we can do anything to help you, amen, yeah, if we can do anything to encourage you, anything that will draw you, amen, yeah, closer to God, we want to do it. But we're not on parade for ourselves. Amen yeah, says in uh, Peter 2 and 9 that uh, we are uh, a, a, a chosen generation, royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Amen. Yeah, that we might show forth the praises of him that has called, brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Yeah, Again, he, we, we, our life ought to be a praise to him. Amen. Your life is not, well, it's a praise to Griffith. No, it, it, that's off. That's wrong. It's a praise to him that brought, called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Amen. And so there is personal responsibility. Let's move on. The way of holiness. And I'm going to expand upon this in uh, future in, in future teachings in this four part series, but the way of holiness. Let's go to Isaiah thirty five. Isaiah thirty five and eight. Uh, he says, "And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of." Holiness. Amen. And on the way of holiness, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, those who, those who are called and uh, anointed, those who has, have accepted, amen, uh, the plan of salvation, those, amen. And then he talks about, uh, he says, the wayfaring men. Somebody thinks that those is the wayfaring. No, the wayfaring men are, uh, 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 again, speaking of uh, the, those that are pressing their way. But it is showing us the, uh, the, the, uh, the I don't want to say the power of it, but showing us uh, the, 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 that God, Amen. Has set a way that is attainable. It is. You, 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 somebody say you can't live it. He says there's a way of holiness. Amen. Amen. That the unclean shall not pass over. But, though, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men. Though fools shall not err therein. Says it's so simple. 
is so plain. Amen. It is so, he, he makes it so clear and obvious. Amen. That it's not about intellect or uh, about intelligence. Amen. But it is about a heart condition. Amen. That, uh, uh, again, you don't have to be, amen, Einstein, amen, to understand the way of holiness. Amen. It is, uh, it is of such a nature, it is so clear that a fool shall not err therein. Amen. Can't do it. Don't understand it. It is a clear way. Amen. The holy way. Amen. The unclean shall not pass over. God is not accepting any and everything. Amen. Folk try to throw a lot of things up at God. Amen. God is not accepting just anything. Amen. You can't buy your way in. Amen. There are those that think that they'll be saved because of how much they give. No, 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 you can give all that you, well, you know, all that you want. Uh, first Corinthians, for a moment, let's go to First Corinthians chapter number three. No, not First Corinthians chapter number three. First Corinthians chapter number 13, I'm sorry. Yes, First Corinthians chapter number 13. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 13, beginning at verse number one. It says, though I speak... With the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, the agape love of God, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, just making noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, if I have not charity, the agape love of God, I'm nothing. No, I'm a superstar. No, I'm nothing. Amen, without the love of God. He says in verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, sacrifice myself for others, and have not the love of God, it profiteth me nothing. You can't buy your way in. Amen, again, that does not impress God. Amen. God says the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to my, they are mine. Says I, the heavens and the earth, they're mine. Said if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Amen. What he's saying is I don't need your money. Amen. Don't say that, Pastor. Folk quit giving. It'd be to their own demise. Amen. Because again, uh, he does speak to us about our responsibility to give. He speaks to us concerning our, our responsibility to uh, give back to him a portion of what he's given to us. Amen. But uh, I don't think, uh, because again, uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, was it the publican talking about our tithe? And our, or was it, the, uh, was it the Pharisee, the rich young ruler? I, I tithe of, of, uh, of tithe of anise and all of that coming. And uh, I fast and this and that. Amen. Again, uh, he said, this ought you to have done. <laughs> And not to leave the other undone. Amen. And so, again, we see that it is a simple way. Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 3. 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 3. And verse number 12 says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. First of all, that's not the end of it, but love one toward another. We got to love one another. Amen. We can't, uh, we can't, <laughs> amen. We, 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 let's, let's uh, hold First Thessalonians <laughs> and let's go so that we can get it uh, straight from the word, I believe. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 4. 
And verse number 19, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 19. It says, we love him because he what? First loved us. Amen. I love the Lord. He loved you first. <laughs> if he hadn't loved you, amen, you wouldn't be here. If he hadn't loved you, you wouldn't exist. If he hadn't loved you, you couldn't be saved. Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. He loved you before you got here. Went to Calvary before you got here. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. It says we love him because he first loved us. Like that uh, little story that Shirley Caesar sings about the little boy. I don't know if he cut the grass or what have you. Coming in, telling mama I did so and so. And... Uh, you know, and I, I, I'm charging you this and that for the work I did outside. Amen. And Charlie Caesar talks about that mother, and I can't go through it like she can, but she talks about for the nine months I carried you, <laughs> growing inside of me, no charge. Amen. And what I'm saying to you is uh, we cannot be puffed up. I love the Lord. I love God and this and that. He loved you first. Glory, and, and no matter how much you do for him, you'll never do as much for him as he's already done for you. Amen. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. Verse 20 in 1 John 4. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. That's what the Bible says. Amen. He that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? I love you, Lord. I can't stand this person, but I love you, Lord. Amen. No, 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 no. Amen. Again, uh, we've got to love one another. Amen. And in verse 21 of 1 John 4, it says, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Amen. What you say, Mother Brooklyn? Love isn't love till you give it away. <laughs> Amen. I know that right. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12. It says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and to all men, to all men, even as we do toward you, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. Amen. Establish uh, to, to uh, ground and uh, to, to uh, make a foundation. Amen. Something that will uh, stand against. Uh, the wiles of the devil, something that will stand against the storms of life, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable, unblameable in holiness. Uh, again, uh, the Bible says, and please understand, I got to quit, our time is up, but the Bible says that Satan is an accuser of the brethren and he stands accusing us day and night. So please understand, it does not mean you won't be accused of things. And that's a hurting thing when you're doing all you know to do, when you're striving and you're going through. It's a hurting thing to be accused of some things that you know you haven't done. Amen. But that's what the devil does. Amen. So don't get all shook. That's what the devil does. Amen. It didn't say you would never be accused, but be unblameable. Yeah. Amen. They may accuse you, but you didn't do it. <laughs> Amen. You can't be blamed for it. You are unblameable. Amen. Before him in holiness, before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints and our going to close with Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 6. 
Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 6. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Amen. On such the second death hath no power. Blessed and holy is he. You got to be holy to be a part of the first resurrection. Amen. On such the second death has no power. Amen. I was talking to Elder Killer Brewer. He, uh, he, he, we were talking and he said, uh, die, uh, he said, uh, die twice and live once. Die once and, and live once and die. Where are the killer brew at? <laughs> Amen, because I'm twisting this thing all up. <laughs> I thought I had it too, but it, it ain't even in my mind. I, I don't even have it straight in my mind, so I'm going to let it alone. All right, but again, if we are... Born twice, die once. <laughs> because we must be born again. That's, I, I, I still ain't got it. <laughs> All right. Amen. But it was good. <laughs> Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall. Reign with him a thousand years. Amen. God is going to call his church out of here. Amen. For seven years of tribulation where uh, horrible things are going to go on on the earth. Amen. But then, this is chapter 20 in verse 19. He's coming back. Riding upon a white horse with his vesture dipped in blood. And upon his thigh, name written, King of kings, Lord of lords. And he's bringing an, an army with him. Amen. Chapter 19 also talks about the, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're coming back. And when we come back with him, we will have been uh, delivered from the seven years of tribulation. But we will reign with him for the thousand years of the millennium. Amen. God bless you, Jim. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me see if I got that. Born once, you die twice. Born twice, you die once. Thank you very much. <laughs> I thought he might have been able to help me on that one. All right. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And may heaven smile sweetly upon you in the name of the Lord. And we trust that you, we have said something to be a blessing to you. Uh, on today. Again, we are going to receive our assistant pastor, uh, Elder Samuel Any Good Rogers. Thank God for him. Amen. He's coming at this time. <laughs> Let's give God some praise, bro. Someone said, mm, mm, mm. That word, that word good, that word of God is so good. Being holy is so wonderful. It, it's a taxing to the flesh. The flesh cannot stand holiness. It will fight you tooth and toenail. But the Holy Ghost, you power over your flesh. Isn't that wonderful? What a great God we serve. Amen. I want to remind you today, we have several guests who want to bring your attention here at Zion Tabernacle. Uh, Sister Dolly passed away this past Saturday. Sister Karen Dolly, her service will be a uh, chapel service at the uh, um, Floral Park at 425 North Holt Road this uh, Friday at 1 p.m. Amen? We also lost the Sister uh, Mabel Byers this past Sunday. The service will be still pending for the family. They meet today at the uh, Watch for a day to get things lined up for that service. Remember also the family of the Tyson family. Uh, John Tyson's son passed away recently. They had a front of the for the uncle, Jerome Tyson, and the nephew passed away. So probably that family must bring me. Amen? Thank God. All right.
Turn to, no, after class today, we have a world altar prayer, one altar for those that want to stay for prayer. Eternal God, we love you for being the great God that you are. Thank you for the word of God today, Lord. Lord, help us be holy in your eyesight, Lord. Live a clean life to please you, because you show sure have pleased us, Lord. Thank you today. Be with us across the highways, Lord. Bless the weather, Lord. Bless the roads, the highways, Lord, our schools. We love you right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Praise you, Lord. Amen.